Peter, 
chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Here's what the Bible says. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Amen. Well, let's sing a couple of old gospel songs about that precious blood of Jesus Christ. Would you join us, please?
Kathy, we really appreciate that wonderful message and song today. Love really did grow where the blood fell. And I'd like to talk to us a little bit about what it means to truly love one another according to what the Bible teaches us. If you would like to turn to the book of 1 John, we'll be reading in chapter 3, and we're going to start with verse 14. As uh, I give you a moment to find that, I'd like for you to think about the fact that love is a word that we hear every day in many, many forms. We hear it on television, we hear it in the movies, we hear it constantly in the music, on the radio, and at home, and through our uh, echo speaker, and whatever we're listening to music through. This theme of love, love, love. But the world's idea of what love truly is, of course, is not necessarily the same thing as what God says love is. And you know the famous chapter in 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 13, where Apostle Paul talks about what love is and what love is not. Well, as we think about this particular passage today, let's see if we can gain some insights into what it means to truly love one another as a part of the church. Now, beginning with verse 14, John says, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. When we look at a passage like this, there are so many different things that we could get out of it. And I have about four different ideas today I'd like for us to consider. If we look at verse 14, John said, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. This change that occurs when, within us uh, when the Holy Spirit comes to reside in our hearts, it creates this agape, this godly, this selfless, this unconditional type love that only God truly has but he has allowed us to partake of that love. We may not like everyone in our local church. Some people are harder to like than others. But we are still able to love them because we are united to them through Christ. Now, if we find ourselves in a position where we despise the church, we really should do some self-examination to see if we're really truly in the faith. We're going to be hurt by people. We know that's going to happen. It's probably happened to you. It's happened to me. It will happen in the future. But we cannot view that as a reason to give up on um, being a part of the church. For people who say, I love Jesus, but I hate the church, that just does not bear out in Scripture. And look at verses 16 and 17. He said, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Just as the early believers did, as we read in the early chapters of the book of Acts, we must be generous with our possessions and help those in the body of Christ as the need arises. God has blessed us all with different levels of abundance, but he expects us to use those things the way he has placed them in our hands as a steward of it all. He expects us to do a good job, to minister to others, and to use that as a tool to expand the kingdom of God. Now, when we are generous with our possessions, God sometimes sometimes has a way, as only he can do, he just has a way of blessing us beyond what we were able to even give out. And I can't explain that. And I don't know what form that takes, and I'm not just talking about money, but I just know that God has blessed my life whenever I am willing to bless others and be generous. And then at verse 18, he says, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. 
Giving lip service is the easiest thing in the world to do. But lip service is not the same thing as true service. It's in order to walk the talk. We must be willing, first of all, to take some risks and be vulnerable. And secondly, we must be willing to get our hands dirty from time to time. And we must rely upon the Lord to give us the strength we need to live out this true life of godly love. Keep in mind that our service, it speaks volumes about our relationship with God. And it can lead to opportunities to share him with those that we encounter in our lives. Well, another thing and the closing thought today is found in verses 19 and 20. He says, This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. I would dare say everyone listening to my voice has had struggles from time to time with feelings of in inadequacy, feelings of doubt, feelings of fear. These are all normal human weaknesses and normal human emotions. But what John encourages us to do is take our eyes off of those things in our life and take a look at where our allegiance and where our love lies. Are we focused upon pleasing Christ in our daily living? Do the needs of others cause us to take action in some way? Do we really genuinely love the church family? Now, if we can answer yes to those questions, it should give us confidence to realize that we really are a child of God. Only the Holy Spirit can accomplish these things in our lives. But we must be willing to ask ourselves, are we going to let him? As we close it out today, one of my favorite, favorite songs, Kurt Kaiser's simple song, simply says, Oh, how he loves you and me. This song was just becoming popular at the time when I first became a Christian, and it'll always hold a special place in my heart. And so as we finish out today, let's sing it together and sing about this wonderful love that Christ has for us. Goodbye.